repairing a 5 inch gauge model works pannier tank. This is part 2, connecting a compressed air line to the boiler in order to see if it runs, followed by a detailed look underneath. The engine is now sat on the rolling road, ready to run, but I thought I'd have another look at the hand pump first. This hand pump does not move at all, no matter how many times I rock the lever back and forth. Originally, the plan was for the owner to fix the hand pump, but getting it out of the tank is quite a big job and would spoil the paintwork. I've come up with a simple method of making the hand pump move. I'll probably show that in the next episode. At the moment, I'm just looking at the cosmetics. These brackets on the back of the engine are a bit bent. I'm trying to straighten them. On the full size, I do believe that these are used for holding things like shovels, rakes and other firing tools. I am a little bit concerned about one aspect of this engine. The buffer springs are a bit weak on the back. I think I would like to replace them with some more substantial ones. I'm not too concerned with the buffers, though. I'm worried about this, the draw hook. When this engine arrived in my workshop, it had some dummy couplings on the front and rear. These look very good, but are no good whatsoever in this scale to connect a passenger truck to. It needs a proper fitting, if this miniature locomotive is going to be run on a track pulling passengers. And now it's top tip time. I'm about to run this locomotive using compressed air. My airline, which is a piece of silicone rubber vacuum tubing, is held to the blower valve with a spring clip. Health and safety warning, unless you do what I'm showing here, this could be dangerous. And in any case, as there is a spring clip on the end of the airline, you need to wear eye protection. Why have I wrapped the airline around the buffer? Well, it's quite simple. If the airline blows off the valve, it will flail about in the workshop. Let me show you what I mean. I've removed the spring clip from the end of the airline, and when I open the air valve on the compressor, and this is not a lot of air, you can see that the airline starts whipping around. And this is only at 30 pounds per square inch. If this was at 80 pounds per square inch, it would be a much more violent reaction. OK, that's the fun over. I refitted the airline with the spring clip to the blower valve. And when I open the air valve on the compressor, the engine runs. Well, it runs in reverse anyway. When I try and engage forward gear, the engine stops. It will only start running again when I take the pressure off the wheels. Listen to how much better the engine sounds when I lift either the back of it or the front of it. When I lift both ends of the engine up in the air, it sounds even better, but I can't show that because I am in the way of the camera. It is, as I already realised, a suspension issue. The suspension is too soft and the engine is sat far too low on the axles. I should put this as another top tip time feature. I'm using some bubble wrap. The clunk that you've just heard was the suspension going back into place. I put plenty of bubble wrap behind the engine. All I have to do now is just tip it over gently onto the bubble wrap. I find this a really good way to work on steam locomotives underneath. The bubble wrap puts very little pressure on the sides of the locomotive. On this engine, the handrail on the tank at the other side is already broken. This is not my doing. Time now to have a look in the firebox underneath. 
One of the faults that was written on the piece of paper is a leaking fusible plug, but I do not find any evidence of this currently. And in case you're wondering what is a fusible plug, it's a fitting in the firebox crown. You can see it here in my torchlight. The idea of this is the centre of the plug is actually filled with soft solder. If the water level gets too low and the firebox crown becomes too hot, the soft solder melts and the resultant blast of steam and water puts the fire out. Well, that's the plan in the model steam locomotives. I don't think it works quite the same way in a full-size loco, but having a fusible plug is a fairly essential thing. Time to have a look around under here. The guard irons are loose for two reasons, the main one being that the wheels sit too high in the axle boxes, and these guard irons that are actually fitted the wrong way around are touching the rails anyway. You don't always see guard irons on small locomotives. Their primary function is to push things off the rails before the wheels go over them. Time now to move to the front of the locomotive. I'm about to show the model works principle of automatic drain cocks. To be honest, I cannot get my head around this. The model works system uses four check valves. If I was going to fit some automatic drain cocks to a locomotive, I would use some very small safety valves and just set them to the boiler's working pressure. Just in case you don't know why you need cylinder drain cocks on a steam locomotive, it's to stop hydraulic lock. And this happens when the first steam that reaches the cylinders condenses to water. For instance, while the train is in the station, dropping off and picking up passengers, the cylinders cool. So when you open the regulator, the hot steam condenses to water. And this can cause a hydraulic lock, which can badly damage the cylinders. Normally, you would have four taps underneath the cylinder, with complicated linkages and a long rod going all the way back to the cab to a lever to open and shut the drain taps. On certain locomotives, these drain taps can be operated by steam pressure. It would appear that the model works idea seems to work. One job I need to do is fit a pipe from here, the inlet to the steam chest, all the way back to the union on the oil pump in the cab. On most miniature steam locomotives, the oil pump is at the front. But on this engine, the oil pump is masquerading as a seat in the cab. Which I suppose is a good idea, there's less ash at the rear than at the front. In this clip, I'm having a look at the physical condition of the crank axle, and it is surprisingly good. There's not much play. There's quite a bit of side play, but you need that. I'm talking about end-to-end -end play. I'm beginning to think that this locomotive has not actually done a lot of running. Or at least, not a lot of running on a track. The brake is going to need more attention than I first thought. Obviously, this part is not connected to the brake shaft at all. It needs a bolt in there. Although a taper pin going all the way through the shaft would be a better idea. Also, this operating arm is made from brass, not the best material to make components in the braking system. I'm going to comprehensively modify this braking system because the angle of the arm that pulls the brakes on is completely wrong. The long rods that pull the brakes on are a bit too short. I'm quite impressed with this bit. This is the lay shaft that moves the expansion links up and down, and it's a piece of square steel rod in square holes in the operating arms. The first job I'm going to look at is the suspension problem. These springs that were fitted originally are worse than useless, they're just not strong enough. I intend to try some stronger springs to start with and see what happens. And because the springs I'm going to use are a larger diameter, I need to think about the best way of keeping them in the right position. The first idea I've had is to use some silicone rubber model aircraft fuel tubing to make sure that the springs are always centralised on the hanger shafts. I took one of the rods out entirely to see how long it was and to find out what the thread is. Here's a comparison in the size and thickness of the springs. As you can see, the two oily ones are the originals and the one on the right hand side is one of the new ones. As LBSC used to say, in these times of bloodshed and destruction, stay safe, stay healthy 
Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.